Hello and welcome to Live at Epifan. This is episode 51. Yes, 51. 51 yeah, because 50 was last week. So, uh, welcome. It is 3 o'clock Eastern, of course. So, Dan and I are here with another cool streaming topic. Uh, what do we have today, Dan? Yeah, today actually we have a special guest joining us from Wowza. Uh, Tim Doherty is here, and he's going to be joining us in just a moment from uh, California. Hey, we can see you there, but we'll come right back to you, Tim, in a moment, because first we want to talk about some news today. Uh, we had uh, a webcaster giveaway last week. We did, and congratulations to Alicia um, on winning that giveaway. Um, I know uh, you were super excited about that, and so were we. So. Uh, should be, if you don't already have it, it should be on your way, and, and uh, enjoy that. Uh, should be great. Yes, and uh, we also uh, wanted to just sort of give a little bit of a plug for our blog. So uh, recently we've had some really interesting topics on the Epifan blog. I think there was a post this week about uh, machine learning and video, and uh, earlier this month we had a great topic on YouTube Live versus Vimeo Live. So there's a lot of really great information, and our writing team is doing an excellent job of making some in-depth blog topics. So I uh, uh, would encourage you, if you haven't checked it out, epifan.com slash blog, and uh, go see what's there. There's always new things coming out a couple times a month, so uh, stay on top of that, and there's lots of really great uh, information there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, we have all the chats open, and uh, Facebook, YouTube, and, and Twitch, again, uh, all three platforms. So. If you have any questions as we go through, uh, Tim's going to share a ton of information with us uh, about Wowza. So if you guys have any questions about Wowza and uh, and I guess sort of broad stroke CDNs in general, um, then uh, put them in chat and we'll uh, we'll get those in here. We have quite the list already that we want to discuss. So um, who's our expert today? Yeah, so today we are joined by Tim Doherty. Now, Tim is a senior solutions engineer with Wowza Media Systems. He's joining us from uh, Northern California today. Uh, he's a user technology expert with more than 20 years of experience in IT, network administration, video production, and project program management. So Tim is a, a real expert when it comes to all things live streaming, live video, production, and uh, he spends a lot of time at Wowza actually helping customers to visualize and integrate effective streaming media solutions. So we're extremely pleased to have him here today. Welcome to Live at Epifan. Epifan. Tim, great to have you. Thanks, guys. I'm super excited to be here. Um, you, I think we're going to have a great conversation today. I've been looking forward to it. So uh, again, thanks for bringing me on. Excited. Now, Wowza has been in the streaming media space for over a decade. So. Uh, they've been there since the beginning. Um, there's a, a very strong history at Wowza. Maybe you can kind of give us a bit of that backstory. Tell us where Wowza came from and, and what Wowza is. Yeah, go, going way back, it's uh, Wowza Urban Legend 2005-2007 era. Dave Steubenval and Charlie Good. Charlie Good's our, CEO, our CTO and Dave's our CEO. They were working on another project and they needed a way to process video. And through, and I'm gonna go short story long here, they created Wowza as a solution to repackage video. And it started out as, as a utility that I believe Charlie was making just to make his life easier for this other project. And then people started requesting it and it became Wowza Media Server. And it, it's, it's a fantastic solution for um, taking in like an RTMP feed and getting it out to all different sorts of uh, protocols, including MPEG dash and HLS and RTMP. And then you can stream, you know, RTSP streams. It goes, it goes quite extensive into different protocols that it supports. And it became something people could just grab and use to build out their own platform. Um, this is a time before there was YouTube live or Facebook live or these really easy turnkey streaming services. You could take a Linux or Windows box and you know, build out your own environment. As long as you have enough bandwidth, you're good to go. So it developed, um, it's, it's, it, it's a cool company because they've always been revenue positive. We, all, we, we sell things to make money and we continue to have that, that privileged position. And, and we, we're just out here selling software and services. We've got some exciting new products that we've added in the last uh, six to 12 months. And it's fun to be out here in every single part of the, um, I don't want to call it an ecosystem, but it is. It's, yeah. it's a space where people are streaming stuff. So exactly. Uh, exactly. Really cool chronology with Wowza. 
Well, some of that probably explains why Epiphan and Wowza get along so well, because some of that backstory is not totally dissimilar from things that have happened with Epiphan, where you needed to do one thing and you end up creating something to help you, and, and then before you know it, it's a product people want, and you put it out there. Uh, we've, we've definitely had times like that too, so that's awesome. So I love the Epiphan product, by the way. I, I want one. <laughs> I, I, I just don't have the, the reason to buy one for myself, but you guys have a fantastic platform. It's like driving a BMW, if you don't mind me saying. I mean, I'll compliment you guys. And I'm not saying that just because I'm on with you. I really do think you have a great product. And yeah, I, I hope a lot of people Ferrari, are out there. But, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, exactly. And so, I mean, from the Wowza side of things, a lot of our customers um, would probably most likely be looking at the Wowza streaming engine and the Wowza streaming cloud. Maybe you could talk a little bit about those and the differences between them. Well, I like to frame it from the standpoint of complex and customizable. That would be the Wowza streaming engine software that we sell, which is almost infinitely scalable. That's something that a developer can get a hold of, an experienced video engineer, but not excluding an IT generalist, a guy like me who just likes to break something and put it back together again. And, and that gives you a lot of flexibility because you can put the server wherever you want it. You know, you can put it in a tank, which people have done. You can put it on a space station. You can put it in your garage. Whereas you can also build out a, a content delivery network using the platform. Right. So that's the, the complicated side on the more simplified side, but not simplified to the point where it's not powerful is Wowza Streaming Cloud, which is a service. You you subscribe to that, you get your Epifan Pearl, you send it an RTMP stream in a super high resolution. And our transcoding engine, again, that you don't have to manage. It takes care of all the adaptive bit rates. So you get ABR everywhere. We have an Akamai distribution that's bolted onto it. So you have that global auto scaling capability. And then of course, and we may talk about it a little bit more in this conversation, the ability to target those streams Right. Kind of like what we're doing today to multiple services. Awesome, yeah, and that's sort of, that's the impression I've always had uh, from Wowza is that it's this this toolbox with, you know, a huge amount of stuff in it that, that you can do mm -hmm. a lot with it. Um, so what, Tim, I gotta ask, what, uh, what features are people asking for? What are the sort of trending features and capabilities of the Wowza streaming engine that are maybe a little bit more uh, topical in 2018 than they've been in the past? So. Well, I think one of the, the, the most notorious features we have is the transcoder. Uh, we have the ability, of course, to take in one high quality stream, just as I mentioned before, real time transcoding. That involves going from one codec to another, some audio bit rate changes, a lot of customizability there, but I think everybody already knows that. Right now, um, there is the stream targeting capability, which is huge. Uh, giving people the the using people are using Wowza as like a, a traffic cop, where it takes in the stream and they can push it to different locations: one to Facebook, one to Twitch, one to YouTube, one to Periscope. That's kind of a cool feature. Um, the low latency piece, and you know, we may again cover that topic in a little more depth. I think that's a, a huge request at present. Um, there are people that are building exciting, new, innovative businesses. Uh, you know, trivia shows online gambling, um, things like uh, auctions that need that low latency capability. We have those solutions. We're supporting WebRTC. Um, we're supporting a low latency to the browser. We're going to be releasing that, I believe, sometime. Um, I don't want to over speak, but we're going to be releasing it very soon. I'll just say it that in general terms. Um, so yeah, you got low latency. You have transcoding capabilities, um, recording. Um, I'm going to get out into the weeds here because I'm just going to start throwing stuff all over the place. <laughs> Go but, for it. I, I mean, that's the thing. You I mean you mentioned it. Wowza has so many different features. I mean, there's the NDVR. People use that for clip extraction. Um, right. People are pushing HLS from Wowza to static storage like Amazon S3 and then patching it, packaging it later for VOD. Um, I'm definitely all over the place. But <laughs> I, I mean, really, I, it, it's a difficult question for me. Because in my job, I'm dealing with a different customer on almost an hourly basis with a different request. So I'm trying to think of the most common. Um, you know, enterprise streaming still continues to be uh, very, very uh, huge for us. And it's you a know, these are large market still. Uh, totally. Yeah. And, and I'm sure we share that market where um, we, they can take your product 
and push it into multiple Lousa servers that are on a WAN that are behind a firewall. Yeah, and absolutely. that gives a ton of flexibility and efficiency from a networking standpoint. So, yeah, um, well, I mean, another trait we share is exactly like you mentioned. When when I have conversations with our customers, yeah, it's a different customer on an hourly basis with a totally different use case and workflow, and that keeps things interesting. Um, but yeah, it also means that we need to have tools, whether it's something like our Pearl two or Wowza, where you have these you know, extremely flexible platforms that can cover a huge range of different possibilities uh, and really deliver whatever it is that people might need to to their own creative ends. So, yeah, that's... Now, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, subtopics that we want to get to, Tim, but I want to check in because we do have quite a few people uh, chatting with us live. So, yeah, uh, George, maybe you can uh, take a look and chat and see uh, what people are talking about. Yeah, so um, so some of our, our questions are being answered by uh, other people on, on the Epifan staff, but uh, I'll hit on a couple of them here. Some people are asking if we're doing the streaming using Perl. Yes, uh, as with every Epifan live show, we use a Perl 2 uh, to stream, switch, mix, uh, directly to all three of those platforms yeah. we mentioned. Uh, everything is done through a Perl 2. Um, there's some other talk about Perl Mini. For those of you who don't know, that's an upcoming product from Epifan. Um, only thing I could really say there is keep your eyes out uh, at during NAB. We should have some more information there. Um, that follows into one of the other questions is, will Epifan be at NAB? Yes, we will. Both Dan and I will be there. And uh, so feel free to come by the booth. We can show you Pearl 2, Pearl Mini, all kinds of different stuff uh, at NAB in early April. Um, is Wowza going to be at NAB? I Absolutely. So. We're, we're excited go. this year. We're, we're doing something completely different. We're actually going to have a studio production in our booth running throughout the entirety of the event. So, and in fact, I was just in a meeting yesterday where we're planning content and different broadcasters are going to come in. So it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, we're going to be buzzing at NAB this year. Awesome. Look well, for the big orange yeah. <laughs> Wowza uh, logo. You can't miss it. <laughs> well, I'm sure we're bound to run into each other at some point. Uh, I, I intend to. <laughs> did get one question here from uh, that's specifically for you, Tim. It's from uh, one of our viewers, uh, Dave Dunham. He says, will Wowza provide the web, et cetera, for node and peering without a full install inside the firewall? So that's an interesting question that I'm trying to dissect myself here. Well, I'll, I'll take a swing at it. Sure. Um, I have worked with customers who have used um, uh, platform as a service. Uh, we do use uh, Docker images. I, you know, I'll, I'll be real honest. I don't have a huge amount of knowledge personally on how to use part of an application or part of a platform. Um, I think the best way to address that is let's have a conversation and talk about the specifics of it because there are some smart people out there who know stuff that are doing some really advanced, um, I want to say capitalizing on the platform and the ability to you know, run it in kind of an unconventional state. In fact, this is off topic of Wowza, but people are actually learning how to use Lambda to do transcoding. I mean, there's some just really crazy stuff out there that's happening in that, gosh, I wish I had the right word. It's like partial computing. It's like you use just the code and then it shuts down. And so you would find that to be a, a, a welcome topic on our side, but I don't have a document to hand you on it. Um, it's, yeah, it's something so, that's definitely cutting edge. Yeah, so Dave actually followed up saying, I meant WebRTC. Uh, oh, so WebRTC. If that, if that oh, provides okay. any more context <laughs> to oh, that. Absolutely. Yeah, I need, I need all the help I can get, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, if the question is, can you run WebRTC inside of a firewall, the answer is yes. You just need to make sure that your SSL certificate is going to the proper IP address. And it, I'm understanding that WebRTC requires that HTTPS. So um, if you have a customer or you're looking to build a project where you got low latency, not going out to the web, answer is 100% yes, totally doable with Wowza. If you're interested, we've got a program you can jump on and we can shoot you the package and get started on it today if you're interested. Perfect. So there you go, Dave. Uh, reach out to Wowza. They could probably help you with that that solution you're looking at. Uh, but it sounds like, like with a lot of things in my experience, that if there's a some method of streaming you need, probably there's some sort of Wowza method to do it. <laughs> um, you got it. And so, yeah, so that's great. Um, so we wanted, there's a few other things we wanted to talk about while we have you here, Tim. And, and for our audience, certainly, uh, we're always looking at what's the next thing, what's the future hold. And, you know, being that we will be at NAB this year, I think this is probably the first year where um, 4K video capture is now sort of the de facto default. When you go out to purchase a new camera, you will be buying a camera that has 
4K U, UHD capability. So when it comes to the streaming world, I mean, Pearl 2, our, our flagship encoder, is capable of streaming in 4K, but uh, it, it's not very common that people are actually doing it right now. So I no. uh, wanted to get sort of your opinion on the direction of 4K video. Is this something that is going to be happening with the live streaming world in 2018, or are we still going to be waiting for a year or two? I think it's already happening. Um, you can stream 4K through Wowza Streaming Cloud and, of course, Wowza Streaming Engine. I'm seeing it on YouTube. I know it's coming to Facebook Live. Um, you know, VOD is definitely in the 4K range. I mean, if I'm out flying my DJI Mavic, I can record a 4K MP4 and pop it right up on YouTube. So I think it's here. I, I think the camera technology and the encoder technology is definitely supporting it. You know, our, our platform, it's just more data. Yeah. And if you're transcoding, it's just more CPU. Um, and we've been messing around with UHD for a couple of years now since 360 started creeping in. So I, I'm very um, bearish. I think 4K is, is inevitable. I mean, you can't go into a major retailer that's selling um, TVs without a 4K option to buy right in front of you. So yeah, I, think to, I think to downplay 4K might be a mistake. I think it's definitely either here or here to grow. Yeah, I think probably one of the challenges is what's maybe holding it back in a lot of instances is purely bandwidth. Um, I know certainly for a lot of people here in Canada, our ISPs generally aren't that great, and our upload speeds would struggle with a lot of 4K content. You know, it's you're certainly not going to get a, a home connection in most for a reasonable price in Canada that's going to support the bandwidth necessary for 4K unfortunately right. and I suspect a large part of the US is probably similar to that uh, we're not unfortunately all South Korea with you know buckets of, of bandwidth available but I think that I agree with you that the encoders are there the cameras are certainly there platforms like Wowza and face, Facebook YouTube they're all they're all there we're getting there um, but yeah ha there's this big bridge in between that's sometimes lacking and, and I think that's going to close up. Um, we did get one question here, someone asking, uh, when is 4K coming to Facebook Live? As if we had any intimate details about that. I certainly don't, but, uh, <laughs> and I wouldn't want to speak for Facebook, but um, maybe you know something we don't. <laughs> I, I, w I wouldn't speak for Facebook, but if you're in the encoder business, uh, which we are as well, I, I know we're preparing for that. Yeah. And um, it would be, it would, it would be definitely I'd be outside of my depth commenting on Facebook's, you know, live timeline of 4K. But um, I, I if, if, from my perspective, just two guys having a conversation, it's coming yeah. and it's going to be awesome. I mean, for the most part, y you have to have either a whitelisted status or using a Waza Clearcaster to use 1080p on Facebook. So it's it's still not quite 1080, um, but we strongly anticipate the 4K will be available on Facebook Live. And I think it's already available on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think you can stream live to YouTube. But again, we're coming back to that first mile issue. You got to have tons of bandwidth yeah. for streaming in general. Yes. You know, I mean, 90% of the time, in my opinion, if your stream is going badly, it's probably that first mile, that ISP, you know, that cable provider. Um, so the notion of getting up into 12, 15, 14 megabits, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot for anybody to handle in a continuous stream. Absolutely. And I mean, even within a, a, a corporate environment, realistically, you know, even if you have a, a synchronous 50-50 connection, as many businesses do, when you calculate for all the other overhead, then <laughs> you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. But one of our other points we wanted to look at was, and, and it kind of plays into what we were just discussing a little bit, was high frame rates. And I think a lot of people don't realize that let, if you go from 30 to 60 FPS, you really need to almost double your bit rate in order for that to maintain any sort of quality. Um, mm -hmm. On the Wowza side, I, I assume, like most things, you guys are handling those frame rates, you know, 60 easy. Um, have you been seeing anything above 60 at this point? I haven't. I, I think 1080, 60 is, is prime for sports broadcasting, for soccer, basketball, you know, things that are moving. Um, so a standard beyond 60, that... Kind of, I kind of want to give pause and think about that for a minute. That just sounds like a lot of work. Um, so, I mean, yeah, and you're right. Wowza does support it. I, is is there an Epifan solution for that as well? You guys support um, 60 frames per second? Yeah, Pearl 2 can do 1080 60 um, okay. with, with certain configurations. We have our capture cards with the right software that could do 60 as well. Okay. Um, so it depends on what the setup is. But again, 
you know, for most people, going above 30 becomes a, a challenge of either processing or bandwidth. I'd say another... I'll tell you what. I'm sorry, Dan. Go oh, ahead. sorry to interrupt, but uh, you, you touched on sports, but I think one of the major driving forces behind higher frame rates is gaming, actually. When you go to the Twitch side where frame rates actually matter, it's the difference between, you know, uh, competitive gaming and mm -hmm. casual gaming, per se. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, well, I think, again, a they, lot where the demand is coming from. Yeah, and again, Twitch Absolutely. has done something very similar to what Facebook has done, where some channels have been whitelisted to do 1080-60, but most are limited to 720-60 if you want a high frame rate. Um, and, and I'm sure there's a reason for that on their back-end infrastructure, and, you know, that's, that's just the way it is, right? Whenever you're dealing with... You know, for our side, we deal with the hardware encoder side, so it's a, it's sometimes easier to deal with that. But when you're talking about, you know, a cloud-based service where somewhere there's got to be a data center full of hardware, um, there's limitations to that at some point. And so, you know, is I assume Wowza does their math and looks at that and says, how many can we handle and, and where do we impose these limits for making sure to not overwhelm the infrastructure? Yeah, Wowza has a unique way of, of leveraging the extent of what the hardware and the network are capable of doing. So you can you can load up our software, get our get an instance of Wowza going, and you can send it a, a lot of data. Um, but if you don't have the CPU for transcoding or you don't have the network to handle the scale, that's where you're gonna run into problems with our with our product to an, to a degree. I mean, there there is a physical limitation of of a of a uh, of a CPU. I just I grin because I thought of this Russian guy I met at NAB about four years ago, who was just you know real aggressive personality was angry because he couldn't get Wowza to run on a 32 CPU box, and you know it's kind of like that's it's a little extra. That's what my <laughs> kids would say that's a little extra. Yeah. But um, Wowza definitely can run on a you know 16 24 CPU, um, whatever Java is, is capable of supporting. Right. Wanted to ask you, Tim. You you touched on this before, but um, one of the things that is becoming increasingly important in some of the content uh, types that people are streaming is uh, ultra low latency. So getting the latency down to rather than 30 seconds. I mean, we've seen it down to, with YouTube's low latency and ultra low latency. You can get under 10 seconds, but for certain applications, and you mentioned a couple before getting that latency as close to zero is really actually becoming more critical. So I was wondering if you could sort of talk to us a little bit about that and, and, and where you see it going and what's driving that uh, push towards lower latency. Well, lower latency use cases are driving it. And you know anything tactical um, that would fall on the government, law enforcement side, military side, gaming obviously, um, contests, real time, you know, even social. Um, you know, one of the lower latency use cases that we were talking about frequently were sports. You don't want to see that touchdown on Twitter, you know, a Twitter post 15, 20 seconds before you actually see it on your stream. So there, there are driving needs for low latency. Wowza responded to that by building a low latency component to our CDN, and it's not public right now, but we've tested it. I actually set it up on the fly at Streaming Media West, and I was getting sub one second from a hotel Wi-Fi, which, which <laughs> wow, yeah, hotel Wi-Fi. I mean, really, does it actually work? But we actually have a guy who set it up in Sydney and was um, using an encoder and streaming to an ingest point on the west coast of the U.S., and he's getting sub two seconds back. Wow. So it's totally doable. There are constraints. You know, how do you do it on iOS? Yeah. Um, how, do, how do the browsers use the media extensions? Um, you know, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things happening in that space that are continuing to evolve. So it may work today and not work tomorrow. Um, but we're getting there. I, I think we're going to see that become something that is a lot more mainstream than it is now. Because with, with RTMP playback that depends on the Flash plugin diminishing and going away here, whether it's going to happen tomorrow or in two years, we've got to have another solution. That solution hasn't arrived yet. But we're hoping to be at the, at, at the table serving that up. I mean, I think it's gonna. I think it's really gonna help everybody out a lot, including our, including our organization as it drives sales. Yeah. No. Exactly. And and that's you know, those are one of those interesting conversations you always end up with a customer is, <laughs> you know, yeah. what what are their real goal there and with something like Flash as you mentioned, so much of that is player side buffering and that's kind of, you know, there's all kinds of elements that go into that. But sure. Um, I guess another well, big point that we get questions a lot on is actually um, when I have customers talking to me about uh, 
choosing a CDN, and we generally always recommend Wowza for anyone who needs that, that big toolbox Thank of you. different tools. But one thing that I think is probably the biggest that comes up is a question of security. And that usually comes from any customers that are maybe, you know, they need to step outside of the, the free options like a Facebook or a YouTube. And, and because they need an element of security that those platforms don't really offer. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about some of the security layers that Wowza can offer within either the engine or cloud or both. That's a fantastic question. Um, and, and security isn't always easy, uh, but I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because people bring it up to me. I get that question frequently as well. You know, we don't want streams being stolen. You've right. gone to all the work for the production. You've built the, the 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 front end. You're selling it. It's a part of your business. You don't want it stolen. We we have several options. Um, the most common, of course, being, you know, you want to have SSL. You need to have HTTPS. So not only is the web page secure, but that streaming URL inside of it is calling back to a Wowza streaming environment over a secure SSL protected encrypted um, stream. So we have that, and that's that's fairly straightforward to set up on both platforms. Um, but one thing that is interesting, and, and I get this request less frequently, is security from the encoder to the endpoint. So, for example, if if an Epifan encoder or any encoder was able to to provide an RTMPS connection, um, we have the ability to do an SSL exchange if that if that capability is there. Right. So encryption is pretty much handled end to end. Um, but the one that's really killer is the secure token which is really interesting. It, it basically enables the player to provide you know, a, a mid-level password to the server, and then the server provides it with a unique uh, code, and it makes that player connection unique. So, for example, for example, my player calls Wowza, Wowza hands it a, a streaming URL that's, that's hashed, it's completely unique, and if it's not used like in 30 seconds or 10 minutes, it becomes defunct. So that strongly protects the, the integrity of the URL and um, keeps people from, you know, proliferating the streams. So those are a couple security options that are out there that we interact with daily. Um, setting them up on our platform, it's different with Wowza Streaming Engine and it's different with Wowza Streaming Cloud. I would, I would always say to, it's going to take some time and testing to get it working just to your specification. But um, security is definitely, definitely a big concern. And of course, sure. you know, I don't. I don't know if you want to go into it, but there are the DRM options as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could leave that for another time for sure. I figured, um, yeah. That's a that's a word people don't like to talk about a lot. <laughs> um, so we are we are running short on time here, Tim. But I wanted to uh, just ask you a little bit about sort of your outlook on the next year or two. Yeah, let's, so, let's dive bleeding edge. How about yeah. That? So <laughs> you know, one of the things, oh, and goodness. and we mentioned the Epifan blog early in the episode, but one of our recent blog posts was looking at machine learning and 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 how that's going to how the impact of AI is going to play into uh, streaming media. Uh, things like automation, targeting, interactive chat aggregation, um, you know, automated studio, these type of things. Uh, just wondering what your perspective on these things are. What are you excited about? Where do you see it going? Well, the, the, the AI is frightening. I think Skynet's <laughs> going to start taking over our streams really soon. <laughs> um, I, I've seen some things that have blown my mind in the bleeding edge space. Um, I was at Video at Scale, which is a really cool video conference they do at Facebook. And there was someone presenting on how machines can analyze the content inside of the video. That, to me, is what's most fascinating. They can see that I'm wearing you know, this brand of glasses and that I have the Wowza logo on my shirt. And so they can use that information to tailor, of course, advertising or build profiles about me. And you know, nobody likes the Big Brother vibe. but. I mean, not only they're looking at your pictures, but now they're looking at on social media, of course, you know what you're broadcasting. So that notion is very interesting to me. There was another um, major news broadcaster. I won't mention him by name, but they actually have a machine learning mechanism that goes through video VOD content and it flags news articles. So they have an engine that can grab information from, you know, a report that a reporter put together that flags and automatically um, curates news articles and, and, and packages not only the video, but you know the corresponding buzz that's going around it. Mm. So for me, I, I don't know the intricacies of it. I don't know how they're doing it. I, I'm sh I, I know they're very smart about it. There's some pretty crazy stuff that's happening in, in that AI machine learning space. And you know I'm not an authority on that, 
but I do know that um, we're going to start to see Skynet watching our videos pretty soon here. <laughs> yeah. So I think we'll probably start wrapping up. I'm just going to remind any of our viewers that uh, if you have any questions for us or for Tim, throw them in chat there quickly. Facebook's been pretty quiet today. So any of you guys watching on Facebook, if you have any questions, throw them in there. We'll try and get them here at the end. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us today, Tim. I was just going to throw it out there that one of the other items, and, and I think probably we'll end up doing additional live shows on this. I'm sure it's going to be all the buzz at NAB, but some of the other things, maybe not quite bleeding edge, but really leading edge are things like VR, 360, you know, coming codex, uh, H.265, etc. Um, I guess the quick question is, do Wowza support these things today? <laughs> Well, Waza supports H.265, of course, H.264. We're working with uh, SRT very, very ag aggressively, and we've implemented that in, in, in several capacities in our product, um, you know, as well as the broadcast standards, you know, MPEG TS streams and, you know, the old legacy protocols that work really, really well and really, really fast and makes you wonder why we're not still using them. And, you know, a, a lot of these things. So I, I think what happens with Waza is we, we figure out how to adapt to the technology. That's what happened with VR360, which I don't think is is going anywhere. I think it's a tremendous engagement. And VR360 is just like 4K video with Wowza. I mean, there's metadata and there's other aspects of it. But again, if you've got the, the, the pipe for the bandwidth, if you've got the stitching and you've got the technology like with VR360, you can get into Wowza. We'll figure out a way to get it out to a CDN or get people to connect to it and watch it. So I, I, I'm really aggressive with that. Um, you know, our, the, the strategic direction the company takes, uh, we tend to know about codex and evolution that's happening. You know, I've seen um, like VP9 added, of course, to support WebRTC and, you know, other modes of transcoding that are being added inside of Wowza to make it more capable. So I, I think you can rest on us to be in front of it and very, um, very ready to handle new things that are coming around the bend. It's good to know. It's good to know. Excellent. Well, uh, I think we're going to probably wrap it up there. Do we have one? any more questions? Uh... Um, we did have one question just coming in here quickly. Is Wowza being used by universities to live stream online courses? Um, if so, what are the main advantages? Uh, I would maybe just focus on that just as we're wrapping up here and as quick yes or no. Is, is yes. Wowza something that's being used as a CMS to a degree? At, well, CMS, no, but we're actually providing the infrastructure to stream that video. We have partners that are building incredible e-learning platforms, but I can tell you, they can use your product, they can use ours, and they get those streams out reliably, consistently, with without any real maintenance on the back end. So, yes, we are deep inside of the e-learning space. Perfect. Uh, so I wanted to thank all of our, our viewers. Uh, there was another one coming in here just very quickly saying, I just got here. We already talked about Pearl Mini. Um, yes and no, there wasn't a whole lot to discuss today, but uh, keep your eyes out and we are going to have more information in the coming weeks, uh, especially around NAB. There will be more information about uh, Pearl Mini. Needless to say that when Pearl Mini is released, it will support Wowza and uh, that'll you know, work really well with that last question about tying in things like Wowza and Pearl Mini within the education environment in universities for lecture capture and so on. So we're really excited to see that come. And uh, so, Tim, thank you so much for joining us and, uh, and answering all of these varied questions, a big, broad spectrum. And uh, thanks for all of our viewers. Thanks for having me. You guys are awesome. I, I enjoyed the conversation. Look forward to uh, seeing the response online and uh, wish you all the best. Definitely. And if you're at NAB, hopefully we'll grab a beer and chat some more. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. And we'll see everyone next week, Thursday. What do we have next week? Uh, next week, we're actually going to be looking at AV Sync, one of the most mm. common live streaming issues that we deal with here. Uh, we've dealt with it here on this show. We've made our tweaks. We have some tips for you of how to analyze your, your AV Sync issues and how to solve them. So if uh, you want to learn about AV Sync, Make sure to tune in next week, same time as always, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and from us here at Live at Epifan, thanks for uh, joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for so much.